Hello, Fight Insight fans, viewers, listeners. I'm the Filipino podcasting machine, Princey D, and with me in the, the man formerly known as Timbo Slice, Timmy B. Before we get started, please remember to follow, like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your pods. On today's podcast, we are honored, absolutely honored, to talk to one of the greatest female Adam Waite fighters in the world today about her future and, and the upcoming one FC uh, Grand Prix. We discussed the interim fight uh, announced between Gain and Lewis, pick our fighters for our weekly fight on site, and a whole, whole lot more. Tim, hit it. Yes, Timmy B. All right, our guest today is the number one ranked Adam Weight contender in the world. She has a perfect professional record of 8 and 0 and is the heavy favorite in the upcoming 1FC Adam Weight Grand Prix tournament. After re-securing her rightful shot at the title, she hopes to be the first ever female MMA world champion from the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to us from Bangkok, Thailand. She is a massive star and a fan favorite around the world. She's the pride of the Philippines, Denise the Menace Zamboanga. Nice. Hi. <laughs> wow, we have Denise in Fight Inside. That's amazing. <laughs> Denise, I, I, there's a big Filipino following over here. So there's actually I'm so excited to have you on. And they're like, oh my gosh, you got Denise on Fight Inside. This is huge. So thank you for coming. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy that um, I'm part of this podcast. So yeah, guys, if, you know what, Denise, if you want to speak Tagalog, you go ahead. I'll translate for you, okay? So I at least I get to practice this. So it's like reverse nosebleed, right? Uh, so guys, she's excited. She's happy, ready to go. Tim, take it away, buddy. All right, Denise, thank you so much for coming, Denise. We um, let our fans know that you were coming and the reaction was crazy. People love you. Like they are so excited to watch you and to, and to hear about you. The first question we have is, how does it feel to have fans all around the world and be like such a big star in the Philippines and around the world? Yeah, so I'm so happy because I had fans in in the world because before it's only in Philippines. I only had fans in Philippines, but now I have fans with all over the world. So that's why I'm so happy and grateful. <laughs> Denise, uh, you're the Filipino Pacquiao. The female version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Denise, how did you get started in MMA? Um, I've started MMA because of my brother. He influenced me. Yeah. Since when I was like 17. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, can I speak to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Um, yun nga. Um, tiyanong ako ni kuya dati. If I can fight MMA, like normal conversation, like, do you want to fight MMA? And then he asked me, like, and then I was like, okay, I want to try. And then he trained me, like, two months and then that's the that's the first uh first time i train mma i i train mma for two months and then i fight mma <laughs> yeah parang ano lang trip trip lang ni kuya na tanongin ako kung gusto mo ba mag mma ganyan gusto mo ba i-try so sabi ko okay lang sige try natin <laughs> tas yun doon na nagtuloy-tuloy oh wow so basically Denise her brother just say hey you know what come along come along you see let's just try it out we'll see what happens and ba bam superstar now super, super superstar na siya right so she's a big superstar now right so there you go like she's uh but She's in there, uh, like it's actually, it's actually, it, it worked out for her. So that's that's amazing. It's amazing, Denise. But when did you start training in martial arts? Did you do it as um, a young girl? No, I just started since I was seventeen. Like <laughs> hobby, lang po. Like hobby oh. with my brother. 
wow. it's not like very serious because before um i was serious in my study and um you know like it's not my my thinking that i'm gonna pursue ma <laughs> like it's just parang dumating na lang yung time na parang may mga nag-o-offer sa akin ng mga big organization tapos parang nagtuloy-tuloy na hanggang sa nangyari yung may nakagraduate ako ng college tapos naka, nagkaroon ako ng permanent work tapos nung na, nandun ako sa work ko na yun nag-aano pa rin na may mga tumatawag pa sa na different organizations tapos dun na nagkaroon sa akin na parang what should I choose? Should oh. I work or should I do MMA? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, so guys, for anyone who, uh, watching and listening, so basically, Denise, it, basically what happened was it kind of just, it, it just kind of happened and it just worked out for her. It just, it, for her, it was just, uh, you know, it never, it was not something that she never really thought was going to actually uh, end up being where it is now, where she's a big, huge, massive MMA superstar. Like everyone's uh, like looking for her, thousands of followers on Instagram. And uh, actually, uh, Denise, an- ano bang course mo sa, sa Pilipinas? So guys, what's, what is her course back in the Philippines? Ano po, IT ako ng fitness, hindi na ako, nagka-college ako. H- hindi nursing? Hindi po. <laughs> that's, get, try and guess my job. Nurse, <laughs> uh, as as either you're either, so Tim, usually if you're Filipino, it's either, it's you're either getting into like an engineering IT field or, or nursing, it's one or the other, right? So there you go. But So what, so what was Denise studying in school? IT. Oh, okay. Mm. Crazy. That's great. Um, <laughs> Denise, I, I can't believe that you started MMO, MMA so later. But um, And when you're talking about your brother, you're talking about Drex Zamboyanga, who is, uh, he's also in 1FC. So we love Drex as well. Um, when you're in 1FC, the big thing there is that everybody seems so polite and respectful. Like everybody's always respectful to the other fighters and they seem very like a true martial artist. Um, yeah. Does one F, like in here in Canada, in the US, we, we watch a lot of UFC and sometimes the people get very aggressive with one another. But does one FC tell you to be more respectful or is it just that that's how you guys are there? Um, actually, I'm not used to, to do like trash talking, you know, like, because even I want to, <laughs> my, my, even I want to, um, my family doesn't want me to, they always want me to be like, be humble, be respectful, don't be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, they don't always don't be to be like, yourself. to be like low profile only. Yeah, yeah. Then but you that should, you should say next time when you're in one of you say, oi, oi, dulinka, or say something like that. Maybe that maybe that's a little bit more. It's not as bad. Basically, when you're cross-eyed, Timmy, that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, that's great because I mean, even like I've heard in other interviews and things like that, Angela Lee is the champion, and that's who you know you want to be fighting and who you want to take the title. But I've heard you say that she's your idol. So even there, you like you have a lot of respect for the other fighters in your division, right? Yeah. No, that's awesome. It's really nice. And it's <laughs> nice it's nice to see the fighters, you know, respect one another yet still compete. So that's really great. Mm-hmm. Um the Grand Prix that you were supposed to fight in was supposed to be in May, and then um unfortunately it's been delayed. Do you have you heard anything about when it might be back? Um, I haven't heard from them yet, but um, they will say they will reschedule it sooner, like late summer, but still doesn't sure schedule or your date. Okay, okay. I mean, we're all so excited because everybody loves a Grand Prix tournament, and this one is so exciting. In the first round, you're supposed to fight the South Korean Ham So Hee who, you know, she's very experienced. She's a champion in Risen. She's the Atomweight champion, the super Atomweight champion. So that's a great fight for you. Um, how do you plan on winning that fight? How do you expect to win it? Me, I can go with her, like, even with, with hands or in ground because 
I was preparing her both striking and jiu-jitsu. So either or her, I can, I think I can finish her. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> see, so see Prince, very respectful, but very confident. Yeah, <laughs> but Denise, uh, uh, like what's, uh, uh, what's the, what, how would you like to finish it? And uh, like, what's your, um, if you had to pick, how would you like to finish the fight? I want to finish her like striking so I can prove the word that hindi lang ako pang ground. Gusto yeah. ko rin siya pang striking kasi uh, gusto ko rin ma-challenge yung striking ko sa kanya kasi alam ko na sobrang galing niya sa striking. Okay, so kasi you guys can go toe to toe, right? Kaya, yeah. There you go. Nice. Yeah, you, you see, to, to me, to me, I actually understood what you said. You, to, she spoke in full, uh, full I, dialogue, and Timmy in there goes, "Yeah, I understood everything." I'm yeah. getting it. I'm yeah. getting it, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, um, like I said at the beginning of the interview, we asked the fans for questions, yeah. and we have never had so many fans asking questions. Like so many questions, people love you. You must your Instagram. You must get people messaging you all the time. A lot. Yes. <laughs> I just. <laughs> that's why I can't see the the some of the messages because it's so flat. <laughs> yeah. But I, I I'm trying to reply all of them. No, that's for the support something like that. <laughs> no. Denise, why don't you hire a secretary? <laughs> there you go. You're a big star now. <laughs> Yeah. Tsaka na po pang champion na siguro. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There you go. Um, okay, so we're going to ask you some fan questions, Denise. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. All right. So the first one I'm going to ask you, we got lots of people, Denise. Uh, a lot of people were asking that they wanted to date you, but we're not going to ask that. But <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob Oaks asks, do you want to move to Toronto? I think it's because he was asking you on a date, but have you ever thought about moving to um, Canada or the US to train? You know, when I was thinking before um, where I can do my training camp since I choose this career, I was thinking to go to the US to, to train. But I had a offer here in Bangkok before last, so yeah. But, oh, okay. You know, it when I was young, it's my. I had a dream to to be in <laughs> in states. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I think I mean you have an amazing gym right now. Uh, for anybody <laughs> that doesn't know, she's with Maroc Force MMA in Bangkok. And that's a great gym, Denise. So I, I wish you all the best in training there. It is a lot of good people yeah. there. Like you're happy yeah. there, a lot of good people. Yeah, so much. It's way, way better. Yeah, it's nice. like family, yeah. That's great, that's great. And your brother trains with you there, right, Drex? Yeah, that's right, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, that's great. Uh, the next question was Nick underscore Tan 35. He asked, and similar to what Prince asked you, but what is the best way you like to finish your fights? Do you rather get a finish, like a KO or a submission, or do you rather go a decision? I think all of the fighter wants to be like finish, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. And then, and do you, okay, so then do you prefer? Because, yeah, I prefer like finish or knockout because, you know, when it comes to decision, you know, the nervous, it's yeah. like, my heart will be like, do, 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 you know, there's, there's a possibility. I'm not sure if, if I'm going to win or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, when you fought Mei Yamaguchi, you were dominating that whole fight. So I knew you would get the decision. And then on the last fight that you fought, I mean, you finished that girl in, in the first round. So it was very impressive. So you've done a Thank great you. job. <laughs> Thank um, you so much. We had a lot of questions about food and about what you like to Sorry. eat. And so MMA Social Squad asks, chicken or pork adobo? Chicken with pork adobo. 
No, chicken or pork adobo. <laughs> oh, you want both? Are you saying you want yeah. both? No, okay. I like pork. I like adobo. Oh, okay. Wow. Adobo. Denise, like, is there uh, is there a lot of uh, uh, Filipino restaurants uh, in Bangkok there? Yeah, meron po. Meron. There is. Wow. Is there one particular one that you recommend? Say, uh, the tourist is coming there that wants to go check it out. What's like the best Filipino restaurant in uh, Bangkok? Yeah. I think like Lola Kitchen, but they will, but. My cook is better than Joe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Inak, E I N N A K zero asks, who are your MMA inspirations? So, who inspires you? Who inspires me? There's a lot of people who inspire me when it comes to MMA, but I inspire my, my brother because he's like, he's championing in philippines and he fought like different division and he's my he's the reason why i'm here so mm -hmm. for me he's my inspiration and of course manny pacquiao he's like very <laughs> humble see very humble person and he's really good like the best in the world no yeah. that's amazing and that's the thing too, uh, uh, Tim, is that you know a lot of a lot of Filipino fighters they they don't you know they don't do much talking outside of the ring. The talking happens inside of the ring, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Right, <laughs> Denise. Oh my gosh, when you see her, even some of the fights that she's in, it's like she she comes in with a smile on her face, and once you hear the ding 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 ding, I'm like, whoa, Denise, Denise, what happened? Oi, Denise, stop, stop, right? So she, <laughs> Full throttle. I, I see the aggression. Oh my gosh! Like it's it's a complete switch. What the, so Denise? And in, in when you're uh, fighting, is there something that happens? Is there like a switch that happens when you when you get in the ring and you hear that bell? I don't know that in your head. Like, like in my head, I always think in every fight, oh. I always think that I need to kill her. <laughs> I, I never told my parents but because they were gonna get angry but that's the secret <laughs> so the secret's so out this is that live and fight inside now we know when denise walks into the ring he go papa tayin kita that's it <laughs> oh my god tapusin, ganun, tapusin, tapusin. Right? Oh. <laughs> so, Timmy, to post it means if anyone watching this podcast right now, Denise just said, I will finish you. I will kill you. But nice. with a smile on my face. Just in my head. I don't in tell it to her. But... <laughs> Denise, well, too. Denise is the one that, that, that'll say that I'll kill you and then I'll buy you halo halo after. Right? <laughs> but I'll hug you after. Don't worry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Denise, when you do fight, sometimes you wear the shirt with the long sleeves, and then sometimes you wear the shirt with the short sleeves. Is there a reason why? Is there a reason why you go different one? Actually, I didn't know that I'm gonna wear long sleeves. <laughs> okay. It was just like, okay, here's your set, and it's it's the my flight is like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have. To. But I prefer short sleeves. Okay, so you prefer short sleeve. And um, but what about some some girls choose just to wear like the tank top kind of thing? Tanks up. Um, I think I'm gonna wear that on my next fight. <laughs> oh, but okay. I prefer, but I'm, I prefer short sleeves so I can put a lot of sponsors. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. Okay, more space for sponsors. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, we have a question from, I don't know how to say this name. This is at E E S I E E E E S I E. Uh, he asks on a scale of one to 10, how prepared are you for the Grand Prix? <laughs> I think I was preparing for Grand Prix for this fight for almost one year. <laughs> yeah. For almost one year, I think. Yes, so I never... And then we go back home since, since after May Yamaguchi's fight. Okay. So I think 
this is the best fight comp I've I've had. Yeah, it's been a long, so I long. Think I, yeah, I, so I think I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's been a long fight camp because it keeps getting delayed, and you don't know when it's going to come back. Yeah. Yeah, that's I crazy. Be, I need to be ready, like anytime. So, so yeah. you, actually, I wanted to ask you with your with your uh, 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 fashion style and stuff. So, next fight, Mo, are you gonna reveal a brand new tattoos? Are you gonna have like t arm sleeve tattoos and all that stuff? That uh, is that is that next on the fashion line? Hindi pa hindi hindi ako ede. Hindi pa. Hindi pa. Maybe, maybe just get the you know the stick on ones, right? Because that's the new style now. Everyone has to have the tattoos, you know, all that. That it's yeah. like, right? Are you could ever yeah. could, would you ever consider getting one? I want to, but I don't think my father would agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I asked him if oh. I can get a small, oh. like an inch of tattoo. He said oh. no. <laughs> Denise, you know, you know what you should say. You say, "Tai, Tai, if I win the championship, can I get a little one like this? If I beat Angela, can I get a small one? Where, 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 where are you planning?" I, to I think he, he would agree. He would agree. They agree, right? <laughs> there you go. If if you if you if you were gonna get the tattoo, what what tattoo would you get? Um, that that's that's the that's the thing I told my my father. Can I get a tattoo? I will put your name. <laughs> <laughs> and he still said no. No, Denise. You know what? I'll tell you guys something right now. In Filipino parents, no one, no one wants, no one wants their kid to have a tattoo. But that's a good strategy because that's how I got my first tattoo. Go, mom, night, night. I'm gonna get a tattoo, and it's got your name on it. And she got, her, I got a tattoo right here of my Lola's. And my low, my yeah. two malolas, and my my mom right at the bottom. She's like, "Nice, okay, okay, okay." Tapos ka na, right? I'm like, "Yes, mom. Tapos na. Okay, one more, and one more, <laughs> <laughs> right?" <laughs> Nonstop. <laughs> Nonstop. There you go. Yeah. Um, Denise, we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Is Thank there? You so much. Is there anything that you want to say before you go, or anybody that you want to? Um, say anything to you uh yeah i just want to to thank to my all my filipino fans and some of my fans all over the world i want to thank my, to my g mara force mma and to my sponsor singha corporation and karabaudang and also booster fight gear and yeah for for both of you guys, Fight Inside Podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a lot yeah. Denise. And Denise, actually, Tim, before, you know, before we go, let you go, I just want to say, Denise, when you win the belt, babalika, right? You're coming back. Siempre po, siempre. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, I'll your, and I'll do your tattoo for you, okay? No. Fight, Don't. In, fight Inside. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> We will we will pay for that tattoo for sure. No. Denise, hold on. Denise, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do you it. Need to tell, you need to tell my dad first. Okay. 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 Denise, number niya? Tell me. <laughs> Denise, Denise, one person that you didn't say uh, thank you to is your dog. You have such a cute little dog, right? Yes, here's my dog. Come oh, let's see you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ano pangalan niya, Denise? What a cutie. Tabachoy. Tabachoy. Oh my gosh. So she's uh, guys anyone listening it means fat. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a cutie. Tabachoy. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's so cute. All right, Denise. Well, thank you so much, Denise. We really appreciate thank you coming you. on. Good luck in the Grand Prix. You're going to win the Grand Prix. You're going to go on to face Angela Lee for that title, and you're going to beat her, and you're going to be the first ever women's Filipino champion. Yes. Kaya mo kaya mo yan. Patayin mo siya. Huwag po kayo maingay. Sikit lang yun. Don't tell anybody. This is going to be live. 
I have nothing to do with the people that I want. So, uh, but always thanks again, Denise, and ingat palagi. And you know, we appreciate you and all that you promote. And uh, yeah, honestly, Denise, like actually watching you and even meeting you right now, you promote everything that makes us proud in terms of Filipinos and the struggle and even having to leave the Philippines to pursue your dreams and to become where you are right now. I know it's not easy. It's not easy to leave your family. It's not easy to, you know, leave your lolas, your titas, your titos back there. And, but you're pursuing your dream. And I, you know what, I honestly feel that there's nothing but a bright future ahead of you. And if Dana White is watching this, Denise is going to be your next best thing. So you guys better watch out for this girl because she's she's ready to come at you, okay? And if you want, I'll be your promoter, okay? <laughs> I'll, be the, I'll be the I'll be the loudmouth for you, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Inga, take care. Thanks, Thank Denise. You. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Bye, Denise. Good luck. All righty. Oh man, she's Prince, so cool. What a nice girl. What a, I mean, she's an amazing fighter. So for those of you that don't watch 1FC, you got to check out her fights. Her fights are all on YouTube. 1FC does a great job of, of posting up all the fights. You know, I didn't want to talk about it, Prince, because, I, you know, mm -hmm. she's talked about it a lot. But she was the number one contender, 7-0. Mm -hmm. oh. She's supposed mm -hmm. to fight the champion. Mm -hmm. There were, because of the pandemic, there were delays. They couldn't get that fight to happen. She ended up taking another fight, fighting another girl, saying, I just want to stay active, risked yeah. her contender, risked her number one spot, fought a girl, beat her in the first round. Mm -hmm. Then Angela Lee gets pregnant, has to go now for, um, you know, has to go away due to the pregnancy. They then put Denise in a Grand Prix tournament mm -hmm. against, you know, seven other great fighters. Mm -hmm. And now she has to win that tournament to get her contendership back. Yeah, so to I'm, then fight Angela, like it's crazy what they're putting her through. But I have no doubt that she's going to win it. She's very motivated. Well, look, man. I mean, all the all the odds are stacked against her. I mean, she the first person that she's fighting is you know well versatile and has got a, a whole slew of experience. But I mean, look, man. She's someone that really wants to go at it. She's she knows what her dream is and she's pursuing it. Nothing's like. And you don't even see her complain. Like it, when she came in the day, even look how she presented. She was like, you know, she was, she was happy. She's ready to go. And I know, like, right? So I just gotta say, man, I've got so much respect for her. She's, and uh, it, it, hey, and she said when she gets the belt, she's coming back. And of course, <laughs> so there you go. And then she what? And plus, she's gonna get fight inside tattooed on her right arm. So what hey. else? Right? And I'm doing it. I'm gonna be doing it. We should actually make all our guests do that. That's that's a new thing we could do. Not just making sound effects for us if they stay on, but we'll make them uh, get get fight inside tattoos. That would be pretty good. Uh, I do want to apologize for anybody that's watching the video. She was in Bangkok, um, so some of the audio, I, or sorry, not the audio, but I think the video started to glitch a little bit. It would freeze here and there on her, so we apologize for that. Nothing we can do, but uh, and Prince, I messed up. I didn't change our background, but that's okay. You know what? And I also want to apologize to people watching is because my Tagalog, man, I, I, I it was so rusty. We went back. <laughs> I was going back at the shoes, but you know what? I was trying my best, but guys, I tried the hard work and dedication. But I, we never stopped, baby, because here at Fight Insight, you know, we, we just pile on. But actually, before we continue on, Tim, guys, again, if anyone's watching this right now, you guys want to follow us, you guys can subscribe at YouTube. So right below us, you can subscribe at Fight Inside Podcast. You can follow us at Fight Inside Podcast at Instagram. And you can listen to us at Fight Inside Podcast Spotify. And also, if you want to follow us, you can follow us at Snapchat. You can follow us at Twitter. You can also follow us at Facebook. All right. Just yep. follow our pieces. There we go. Prince, let's talk about something that is a total disaster when it comes to championship fights. We're going to talk about what I'm calling the Ganu <laughs> interim nonsense. Prince, what is happening here, man? We have... Oh, boy. Okay, so for those that don't know, Francis Ngannou is the heavyweight champion of the UFC, wins the title three months ago, dominant fashion. Current, yeah. They then say Derek Lewis is the next contender and that he's supposed to fight. They tell Nganu, apparently, we want you to fight in August, which is like about three months or so after his, his win. He says, I need a couple more months. They mm -hmm. say, forget it. 
we're now moving on with an interim title. Uh, and Nganu says, you know, it's just nonsense. I remember my interim title fan, title fight against Girizino. And he's making, and then he says, oh, wait. And he's making, you know, a joke saying, hey, wait a second. When I had to wait for Stipe, I fought another guy. It wasn't for an interim title. Now, all of a sudden, they've got Gone versus Lewis for an interim title in August. What do you think about this, Prince? Oh, man. I mean, you can, okay, so Tim, I mean, I was looking at this and I was trying to analyze it. Like, why would they do something like this? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, like I, I don't see what the rationale is unless they're trying to put a U.S. champion. But what, but why does that matter? Like, I mean, at this point, no, wait wait a second. What's the U S champion? Only, only Lewis because gone is from France. Yep. So I mean, I'm saying, so, I mean, maybe they're banking that Lewis will win the fight against Gan. I don't know, man. Right. And then bam, we've got a a U.S. heavyweight champion. I'm, you know, I'm just throwing it out there because this is a curveball that the UFC is throwing at us. No one understands it. It doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to figure out maybe there's something in the rule book that we didn't see. No, 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 no. There's nothing. I mean, he's not injured. He's not going for surgery. He's not like he's there's nothing, you know, and, and the reason why this is a good topic is because, like I said, Angela Lee in one, you know, she ended up she she got pregnant and congratulations. She had her beautiful baby. And, and if you follow her on Instagram, it's there. But you know, they didn't, they didn't make up an interim title. They just say, okay, no problem. We'll do other things while we wait for you to come back. Mm-hmm. There's, Nganu is just saying, hey, I just need a couple months. My opinion is that they have nobody to make a main event for that pay-per-view. And they need something on that card because they were planning on, I guess they were planning on it to be Nganu versus Lewis. And now they're like, wait a second, we have nobody else, which... Uh, Nunez versus Juliana Pena is on that card, but I guess they don't feel that that's worthy of being the main event. Mm-hmm. I mean, how, how valuable is this interim title? Like, even if you won that, like, what does that really mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, it, it, it's like, it's, it's a title. It's just like a make-believe title, right? I mean, that title doesn't really, you know, it doesn't mean anything unless you take out the champ. And uh, Francis is probably just wondering, like, okay, what is going on over here? And you, you heard the beef between, I mean, you heard what was going on between Dana White and Francis. Is, yeah, and, on on Twitter and stuff, you could see things, yeah. Oh, well, man, we were, like, call, you know, calling each other out. Dana's like, oh, he's full of ass and and you know this guy doesn't know what he's talking about he should francis should reconsider changing his camp is yeah yeah changing his management and stuff like that so i know it was crazy i just i don't i just don't i don't i don't get why they would turn this into uh you know an interim title fight between the two right it just doesn't make absolute no sense to me like i thought maybe i go maybe francis had an injury that we didn't even know about but then no looking there's he's perfectly fine he just needs a couple of months to heal up and you know get back at it right so yeah per- perfectly fine the guy's like a monster he's like i don't think this guy would get injured right <laughs> like he's got mm-hmm. muscles on top of muscles i don't know the thing is to me is like you're just making him mad if I'm Lewis or gone, I'm like, whoa, whoa, can you like not make this guy more angry? This guy's already like a killer. I don't need him getting more angry, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, I, and, yeah but you know what? Francis has to also look after his own health as well, right? At the end of the day, he's got to take care of his body and, and him yeah. go fight at a short notice. He's prone to injury. Um, and you don't want to put that at risk, especially while he's at the top. Like, why would you rush it, rush it right? So, right. And, you know, and, and we see comments on our Instagram and stuff like that. People saying like, hey, wait a second. Most champs don't fight more than like two, maybe three times a year anyways. Mm-hmm. So if he wanted just like five months in between his fights, that's not an unreasonable amount of time. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's pretty crazy. I, I don't know why you would do that. Um, and I like, what do you think about Lewis? Lewis takes that fight. He's already number one contender. It's all locked in. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder how much pressure they gave Lewis to take the fight because why wouldn't he just say, Hey, I'll just wait the couple months for Nganu. Like, I don't, like, I don't need this fight. 
You know what? I mean, that's again, we don't see what was behind the scenes. He might have gotten thrown. Yep, that's it. That's what I'm saying. So he might have gotten thrown a big bag to, to make this fight happen because, you know, it, the, the, the fight that makes sense would be Gunn and, um, and Francis. That would make sense. That the fight between them two would be like perfect. That, okay, finally, yeah. somebody that could, that could actually contend and be an actual composition for uh, Francis. But I'm just like, now we throw this into the mix. It's almost, it builds it up. So if yeah. God, then be like, okay, he is worth it. But then how about the other guy that we're looking at? Stipe. He's in there. Where, who? Like where, like where is Stipe in all this, right? Like, isn't Stipe like, wait a second, if there's an interim title, why don't I get a shot at that? I mean, he hasn't fought since losing the title and he did take, you know, some pretty bad shots. So maybe mm-hmm. he needs to like heal up a little bit, mm-hmm. but yeah, it still seems weird. Like it seems like he's just not in the, in the picture at all. So I don't know. We'll see Prince. It's, it's a very, it's a very weird scenario. Uh, that pay-per-view does not look great. And uh, yeah. I mean, cause, cause really like what's, I would think a lot of like hardcore fans, which are the people that buy the pay-per-views, I think they're going to be like, wait a second, this title is useless. Like this title doesn't make sense. So this isn't something that you'd really be vested in to see. Yeah. Um, and I did, I did see someone was posting something about, you know, I said Nunez was the, the co-main. So she would be like potentially the, the headliner. They said that Nunez's last three pay-per-views have been like the worst selling pay-per-views in a decade or something. Like when she's that top. Now, mind you, the people she was fighting, a lot of them, it's like, okay, well, she's going to destroy this person. She's going to destroy this person. So those fights maybe don't bring the drama, mm-hmm. but maybe that's why. But yeah, it's even very... Even the cyborg fight too, like that would, didn't make him... Uh, I don't think it was this. No, but she, that wasn't the headline of that card. I don't believe. Oh, okay. I think when she fought cyborg, I don't think that was the, the main event. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's when, it's when they use her as the main, I think it was like against Felicia Spencer, mm-hmm. um, maybe against Megan Anderson. So it was like, not, not those fights, but anyways, yeah. Um, another thing, because we have some time, we can talk about, uh, this guy, Good old Jeremy Stevens. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about we were talking about to um, to Denise about you know being respectful and and how they conduct themselves at One FC. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Stevens, if you remember, was the guy that at the face off pushed Drakkar close, and then Drakkar close. You know, it was a hard push, and then Drakkar close had to withdraw from the fight saying that he was injured from the push and all that. And we talked about it before on the podcast saying, you know, like people should be a little bit more respectful. They shouldn't be doing stuff like that. In one FC, everybody seems very, very respectful. And it's funny because Denise said that it's like for her, it's because of her own personal upbringing. So I was, I was wondering if she was going to say if one FC tells them, Hey, we want you to be like that, but she didn't say that, but it it's a different vibe in one FC. Yeah. Any, anyways, Jeremy Stevens, I saw an interview and he's talking about the push that happened now, like, what was it, two, three months ago? And he's saying, I'm an animal. I'm primal. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an animal. You get in my face. I'm going to push you. He goes, I didn't initiate contact first. He says that the other guy came at him. He goes, he was giving me crazy eyes and he was coming at me. So he comes at me. I'm primal. I got nothing to do. I got paid for it anyways. So I won that fight. What do you want next? Like, he's, wow. I mean, we've talked about it before, but to see his reaction, I mean, I guess you have to, right? Like you can't be apologetic at this point. I, maybe. Yeah, like, well, the, you know what I realize now, Tim, like all belts, titles, all these things don't matter. Like uh, what really matters is the drama and the buzz that you can build out into outside of this fight. Now look back to our, what we were just talking about. Look how much drama this thing has just stirred up, turning this into an interim title fight. Now you right, got right. at each other, Don and Lewis. Okay, so what's so what 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 do you think is the next best thing for the for viewers and actual pe- pe- people actually pay to watch these fights? They're gonna tune in. They're like, yo, man, this is crazy. This is nuts. Okay, you, let's just go watch and see what happens. Of course, that's what they want, right? And well, yeah. Jeremy Stevens, I mean, you know, 
for him, he you gotta build up, uh, you know that the controversy. You gotta build up, you know, something behind your name. And I was watching. It's funny because I was just watching a couple of um, uh, Conor McGregor when he fought his first fight with Dustin. And man, you just saw how he just built his character up. Man, it was like, that. yeah, right. How he developed his character and whatever. Well, but it's different. But it's different though, right? Because like Denise is saying. And I love, I love how she said, in my head, I'm thinking I'm going to kill you, <laughs> right? But that's, you know, that's her. That's her inside. That's, you know, that's what you got to do to drive yourself. But to do it externally, like she said, hey, my family would not be happy if I acted that way. So it's hard. I mean, you got, it, it, it's a hard mix between, you know, making a fake character and then being authentic to yourself. So... Well, yeah. for, for her, I wasn't, man, I was not expecting that response from her. Literally, <laughs> she said it with such like conviction. She's like, I will kill you. And, pop, pop, and she said it with such grit. And nice. well, that to me, it makes sense because when you see her like, you know, straight, like attack somebody in the ring, she's going straight for a double leg take. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to come get you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So she's always spearing right ahead. And so, yeah, I mean, um, it, it's, you know, you've got different uh, championships, different uh, organizations that, you know, promote their fighters differently. You've got FC that's more respectful, more down to earth. And even, yeah. you know, even like, you know, when you see Brandon Vera call out his fighters, he's like, I, I would like to, you know, challenge you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With respect, right? Yeah. And like, thank you. Yes, I, I, I'm your, you are my hero, and I am so respectful, and also appreciate all that you've done for the sport. Yes, I accept your challenge. Shake hands, hug it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And here you got Jeremy Stevens pushing, <laughs> pushing everybody inside, like, like yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just different. Right. And, and I think one FC does a great job of promoting themselves through different avenues. Like their walkouts yes. are very flashy. They've got like all the pyrotechnics, they've got the, they've got the um, jumbotrons or whatever you want to call it, like the big television screens behind the, the flashing lights. There's a lot more production value. And yes. I feel like, I feel like that's what seems to kind of draw in more of the excitement you you're, you don't need to watch it for the anger between the two people per se or the like the animosity between them you're watching more for the spectacle of it of that show and then the and then the fight of course denise is a killer like she is so aggressive we've talked about this before those are the fighters that i really like the ones that have that like killer instinct yeah and she definitely like she's running at you like mauling you you know um yeah you know what? Now you you think about now you think about when Iggy enters the ring and he does a whole dance routine. And everyone's right, like, right. And then, but then you just realize, you know, some of the people at One FC they have like they have a whole choreography team. They've got like you know fancy suits and stuff like that. And yeah, costumes. So um, yeah, well, you know what? Whatever sells the seats, right? And uh, drama will sell seats, baby. That's what it does. I guess, yeah. And I mean. Um, another thing that we could talk about very briefly is, did you see what happened at BKFC in the post fight? Did you see about that? It was, um, yeah, the Hector, for him. um yeah Hector Lombard. Yeah. He, he, like that was like, what those arms were like, and it wasn't like, yeah. Fake. So, yeah. So it was here. Sorry. Let me take away this uh, banner, but um, BKFC has come under fire recently for the ways they've been handling brawls before and after fights, right? So what happened was, for those of you that don't know, there was a BKFC title fight between Hector Lombard and uh, Joe Diesel Riggs, both of former UFC fame. They fight for the title. Hector wins. He's in there doing his interview. And I guess the next contender, right, this big monster of a man, comes into the ring. I mean, at that point, you're like, okay, someone let him in, right? But he comes into the ring, walks right into the face of Hector Lombard right after he's fought. <laughs> Hector just throws two punches and just clocks him twice, you know. And I mean, you can't be having that. But again, that's another instance of like these things going on that you're like, well, wait a second. Like, is this really what what we're here to see? I mean, I guess we are. And that that's the problem. You got to draw that fine line between. Yeah, but bare, you know, bare knuckles, <laughs> BFC. <laughs> It's like it's their it, they're in their own realm, 
like it's almost like whatever they say goes they're not wearing any gloves like yeah you know, like like an inch long uh, wraps not even covering your wrist like literally it's just bare fist yeah right? yeah and so i mean that that's the thing i mean for them it, they and they're they're going against ufc uh one uh one championship and so they have to bring that drama they have yeah to bring that. that's that's their right so yeah well and, that, and right but that's the thing prince is like they have to bring that drama mm -hmm. right and so that's the thing like that that's what i'm saying this guy had to have been let in the ring yeah how, like the security can't just like how, how are you letting just anybody walk in like why wouldn't you and i just walk in mm -hmm. so i mean yeah it's 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 exciting. Obviously, it gets people talking, and I guess that's the thing. But uh, it's it's different, man. You know, I know. I think that we're probably going to have a lot of viewers of this podcast, probably from Asia, because I know the reaction we got when we posted that Denise was coming on. So hopefully, you guys are still here with us. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure. I wonder if it's the people uh, overseas that see this much differently. I wonder if they look at that with a lot of disdain and don't like it and think like that's unnecessary. I wonder. So leave comments, message us, leave comments and, and let us know what you guys think, whether, you know, those kind of antics outside the ring or in the ring after a fight, you know, do you like that? Do you, do you have disgust for it? Like, what is your feeling? Right. Man, what if Stevens gets on the comments and just drops something to me? Like, hey, <laughs> oh, if Steven gets on the comments, I mean, we'd be very happy because I, I love them. Um, I just don't know about those, those kind of actions, but I'm telling you that that guy, he said it before. He he's always says, I'm a monster. I'm primal. I'm right. Like, yeah, that's just a guy you just got to maybe keep away from, you know, <laughs> you know what? I, I can see him now in the next uh, uh, standoff. They'll just have him in a like glass case. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a silence of the lambs. They'll just wheel him out and he'll be like tied to the, to the gurney. Right. Like this, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like that. That's right. Um, Prince, let's go to our fight on site yes. for today. Yes, yes. All right. So for our fight on site today, we are in honor of our guest, Denise, who, as we said, has a brother in MMA. And I didn't know, but her brother it was the one that introduced her. Yes. Um, we are going to do the fight on site sibling edition. Sibling edition. So... For those of you that don't know, at the end of every one of our podcasts, we do a fantasy fight or a fantasy matchup, and we ask you to come on to our Instagram story every Saturday to vote for who you think is the winner. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put these two up against each other. Well, actually, we're going to be putting uh, two against two on this one. Not necessarily a fight, but just kind of like who you like better or who, you know, however you want to take it. But uh, it will be on our Instagram. And Prince, so... Yeah, so Denise has her brother, Drex, who is a champion, who did uh, inspire her to be a fighter. And I think probably many siblings do that, right? Like the siblings kind of copy one another, right? Or inspire yeah. one another. Yeah, and not only that, they, they, they push each other, right? If they see right. it, especially if you have an older brother that's in it, you want your little brother, hey, come, come you know you would make a lot of money in this thing and i could see potential in you and plus you also need a training sparring partner too so you're like okay come yeah you know, built in yeah built in, right all in one right and you they can't get mad at you if you swim all the time too far right so yeah um yeah so for fight on so i get you know what tim you went first last time you're gonna go first i'm gonna go first. all right before before we get to it i am gonna shout out my my sister because i do ha i have one sister my sister sarah and she got me check this out these are hand wraps. I don't even want to take them out of the package. Oh, what? Look at this. Look, it's a Street Fighter hand wraps, and it's got images of Ryu. What? That's so sick, Tim. Cool, right? From Super Rare. I've seen this on Instagram. Anyway, she got me these, so thank you very much. These are pretty cool. I will, I will very likely never wear these because they will get stinky so fast, and then what are you going to do with it? But yeah. they look awesome. Anyways, Prince, so you're going to go first for uh, Sibling Edition? Yeah, I just realized my brothers don't ever get me anything. How many brothers do you have? I have two. Okay, and you got zero gifts from two? <sighs> can barely, you know, I can, they can, they can barely get a text from those guys. <laughs> All right, well, 
this uh, before this get, goes really south on a very depressing podcast. Who is your pick, Prince, for sibling edition? All right, Tim. So my pick for siblings edition is the one and only. Actually, the two of the these two fighters are actually uh, very well known in the in the MMA world just because of again their striking ability. And actually, one of the older brothers, actually one of the one of the fancier the two, uh, that's actually throwing some really crazy like crazy knockouts in the in uh, in the ring. So I mean, in the cage. So my pick for fight on side is. Sergio and Antonio Perez. There you go, the Perez brothers. Oh my gosh, they look exactly alike, man. When I, <laughs> yeah, no, when I first, yep. when I first found out that you know he had a brother and Anthony was, he was on the come up as well, right? So he was on the come up, and then he was posting IG stories, and then in the IG stories, Sergio was there too, training, and I'm like, whoa, is he a fighter as well? And then you see him come up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh, up and rising in the ranks as well too right so sergio and anthony pettis are my two picks for siblings edition who do you got all right well i am going with a brother sister combo okay and i am going with uh in honor of denise i'm going with not just a brother sister combo but i'm also going with fighters that are in one fc so, and I've picked this guy for a fight on site before. I think I lost, but he's going to redeem himself here because I am picking the North Cuts. I am picking Colby and what's a uh, Sage? Colby and Sage. <laughs> Colby, Colby and Sage North Cut. Um, they are both fighters in 1FC. Prince, I think when I was telling you I was going to pick them, you said you didn't even know Sage had a sister. No, I had no idea. I thought I was the only child. Yeah, no, I think Sage has a brother as well, but um, Colby is a fighter. She fights at 1FC. I don't know what division she fights in. I should really do research, but when you do watch her fight in 1FC, she's fighting like little tiny girls, and she's tall and, and long, and she fights like Sage, so she's got that karate-type yes. fight. Yes. So she's huge, long sidekicks keeping her distance, um, I don't know that she's lost in one FC, but, uh, she's, she's a great fighter. She's got the look, uh, she's Sage's sister who brings in a lot of, uh, clout as well. So, uh, that is my pick Sage and Colby Northcutt for the sibling edition. Wow. I, you know what I, uh, what, what was it called? Um, yeah. Sage, um, I don't know if you've seen Sage lately. Have you seen Sage lately? Yeah, he is like. How, what's the polite way to say it? He has been taking a lot of vitamins. Oh He's massive. Like what the heck? I don't. I mean, it's insane. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Tim, I was I was expecting to say, oh, he, he looks jacked. He's like, no, oh, he's been taking a lot of vitamins. The ones that you know, uh, Yuasa or what's it called? What's the name of Yusada? Yusada. <laughs> Yusada. Look at us mixing up words. Yusada would be like, hey. I don't think you should be taking that stuff. But no, you can see him. He's yeah. Huge. Yeah. Right? He's like bigger than Nganu now. <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong with him. Um, but anyways, guys, so for the podcast, come on over onto our Instagram story and vote for who you think is the, the winner. We're going with the North Cuts versus the Pettis Brothers. Um, Prince, this was a great podcast, man. I can't believe we had Denise. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I um, I could not believe that. Hey, are we gonna do a simulator? Or are we gonna pass up? Oh my goodness! I apologize. It's all right. Good. Listen, okay, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, and, and guys, as part of the fight on site, we actually put these two, these four, four, these four fighters into the simulator, and the simulator will in itself will pick up. Uh, pick a fighter and pick a winner and so it's a million dollar machine and so we are going to pop up so for my uh pick the pettis brothers i have chosen <laughs> you've got a sticker of deadpool yes only one sticker what yes i just realized there was four but you know what <laughs> Right. We so said this before the podcast. I said, remember, it's siblings edition. But yeah. okay. So we get Deadpool representing the Pettis brothers. Yeah. And? 
And for the for the for the lower cuts, we've got who? Again, one person. Iron Man. All right. Sound effects time, buddy. It's been a no, while. No, it's your turn for sound effects. I did it last time. Gosh, here we go. And then Pettis does that running across the cage uh, technique. Superman punch. Superman punch. Off the cage. Off the cage and bam. There you go, buddy. Nice. All right. So the fight on site, fight in site, fight simulator predicts that the Pettis brothers will win. Very exciting. Sorry. No, he did. Well, he's done two off the fence moves. He did the... Uh, Bouncing off the cage with the Superman punch where he knocked out Wonder Boy yes. was one of his last fights in UFC. And then, of course, his big uh, off the fence is the Showtime kick, which was where he ran along the fence and kicked Benson Henderson in the face. Yeah, you know what? When he got Benson with that, I was like, man, because Benson was one of those fighters that like, oh, man, this, this guy's so Oh, he's my favorite. Benson's yeah, my favorite, yeah. I love, yeah, I love him. And then when he got him, he was like, Oh my gosh, it was Benson that he knocked out. Because I've seen the, the highlight reel. Yeah, it's crazy. It on, right? So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. Prince, we are all done, my friend. This is a uh, very exciting podcast. Again, sorry for the technical glitches, guys. Um, what can we do? But we had Denise Sambuanga on the podcast. That is crazy for us. One FC, number one contender in the Adam Weight division. She's a monster. Go check out her fights on YouTube for sure. She's mm -hmm. fantastic. Guys, we really appreciate all the love and support. We appreciate all the questions you guys send in. And um, please do follow us, subscribe on YouTube, watch the videos, like everything, uh, comment. We will write back, no problem. Prince, is there anything you want to say before we go? Uh, you know what, Tim? Uh, it was a great podcast. Actually, guys, uh, if you guys don't know, Tim has been the mastermind in actually getting Denise here. So we got to give big shout outs for Tim because if it wasn't for him, this would have never happened. <laughs> you hey. honest, like, we know what, when we make it big, Tim, and we make it huge, we're going to show the behind the scenes of, of all the hard work. And you should see all the messages Tim has put and sent oh. to Denise to get her. Too many, too yeah. many. So, Tim, thank you. Uh, we appreciate you. Fight Insight Podcast viewers, listeners, thank you so much. Thank you next, for you. And I want to say, Prince, next week uh, for the podcast, we have another up-and-comer fighter coming out. Uh, this gentleman is Chris, I want to say, Wartime Rios. He fights out of Syndicate MMA in Las Vegas. He has a fight coming up on July 17th. And so we are very excited to welcome Chris Rios to the podcast. We're very excited. We will talk about this up and comer, uh, what his life is about, how he got into fighting and where he's headed. Uh, but he looks like an awesome dude and we're excited to have him. And again, another, another really nice fighter as well. So yeah, we're booking yeah. all the nicest fighters that we could find in the MMA world. So uh, yeah, Tim, I guess that's it for me. Thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate you. All right, buddy. Okay. Happy Canada Day. See you, Prince.